Hi, my name is Ro Rosha. <laughs> Hi, my name is Anna. I'm a tour guide in St. Petersburg, Russia. Today, I wanted to tell you about one in a billion destiny of a woman, a phenomenal life of uh, Russian Cinderella, as we call her, Catherine the <laughs> First. Catherine the First was never named Catherine the Great. Those two are not the same person, but she did do something outstanding. She married uh, the Emperor of Russia and became the first woman on Russian throne in the history of our country. Catherine's real name was uh, Martha Skavronska. She had a really hard life from the very beginning. She was born in 1684 in a really poor peasant family and she was orphaned in the age of three. Both her parents died of smallpox. Since she was orphaned at the age of three, she was raised uh, by a Lutheran pastor who took a pity on her. Uh, but she wasn't raised as part of his family though. She was raised as the servant girl. So Martha got married at the age of 17 to a Swedish dragoon. Their marriage lasted for just two, two days and then he had to live to the war with his regiment and gone missing. The Northern War was transpiring before her own eyes and uh, she herself felt a victim of it. The Northern War is the war with uh, Russia and Sweden, which lasted for 21 years. So sorry for break, but <laughs> I gotta show you what I'm having for breakfast. Those are the best. They're cottage cheese cakes with sour cream and raspberry jam. The most amazing food in Russia. Our girl, Martha, was uh, taken by the Russian troops with other women of that village and we sold several times from one soldier to another, from one officer to another, till she ended up in the house of Alexander Menshikov, who was the best friend of Russian Emperor Peter the Great. That's exactly where she met the Tsar uh, while she was working as the laundry woman for Alexander and uh, Peter instantly fell in love with her. He was bewitched, some people said, and that's when her life turned around and she was slowly but surely becoming one of the most important women in Russian Empire, certainly the most important woman in the life of Peter the Great. And subsequently she became his inseparable companion. How did she capture his heart, you might wonder? Surely not by her looks. The contemporary said that she was plain-faced, fat, not tall enough, uh, that her ill breeding was very obvious and her entire look was of a vagabond in an expensive dress. She did know how to handle Peter. She knew how to handle his epileptic seizures, his rages that no one could handle at all. She was a very devoted mistress to him and she was not jealous at all. I could never do that. <laughs> she also could have kids easily. It came to her very naturally. The previous mistress of Peter the Great couldn't have children and Peter was desperate for more heirs and more heirs. Together with Catherine, they had 11 kids. 11? <laughs> Only two daughters lived, unfortunately. Elizabeth and Anna. Catherine was a truly devoted girlfriend to Peter the Great. She slept in the tents, followed him in the war campaigns, uh, as she helps the wounded. She once sold the jewelry the Tsar gave her to buy the Russian army's freedom from the Turks while being seven months pregnant.
Unfortunately, she lost the baby in that campaign. Peter was so devastated, but grateful at the same time. He established the order in her name, which Russia still has. It's St. Catherine's Order. Later, Peter and Catherine were married and Peter threatened to personally rip out the tongues of everyone who said anything bad about her. After all, she was uh, the empress now. Uh, they were married and she was the mother of his kids. She only fell out of favor once when he found out about her affair with Mons that was her lover, one and only, that she dares to have. Peter was enraged. Uh, the Mons was um, quickly charged with bribery, executed, and his head was uh, presented to Catherine I on a tray. That was the only huge fight between the two. They haven't even spoken for three months. They only reconciled after she stood on her knees for three hours in front of Peter the Great to deserve his forgiveness. Well, Peter died shortly after their fight and reconciliation and Catherine became the first empress, the woman on the Russian crown. What was her reign? You might wonder. Of course, she struggled a lot. She was uneducated, illiterate. Um, she couldn't fill in the Peter's shoes, of course. No one could. She had her daughter Elizabeth sign the papers for her. Uh, she was also helped by Alexander Menshikov uh, to his own advantage, of course. The true power has always resided in his hands. After all, he was the one that bought her to be his laundry girl a long time ago. Meanwhile, she parted to her heart's content. Uh, she changed lovers and had uh, balls all night long. They also said that she drank heavily. They say she spent 1 million rubles on parties. The country's budget was 10 million. Her reign lasted less than two years. She died 43 years old. Uh, she was really sick with pneumonia, cirrhosis, consumption. She left the throne to the grandson of Peter the Great, Peter II, and she would never know that he uh, also died uh, shortly, just 14 years old of smallpox. And she never knew that her own daughter, Elizabeth, was gonna be another woman on the Russian throne. What do you think about the life of Catherine I slash Martha Skavronska? Do you think she was even happy? Do you think uh, it's easy to be married to someone like Peter the Great? If you know nothing about Peter the Great, watch my video, Top 10 Facts About Peter. Write what you think in the comment section and thank you for watching. So I'll...